When a pet that has been loved and a constant companion finally passes on, it can hit some owners really hard. And they want the best for it, even after it's died. But as our investigation reveals, some pet owners have been fooled. And that dignified final farewell that they paid for and cherished turns out to be anything but. It's the fake pet cremation scam. When Bourneville, Linda's older dog, died, they paid for an individual cremation for him. We expressed the wish to the vet that we wanted him solely cremating by himself and we wanted his ashes back to go with our other pet who had died the previous year. Um, so we understand his body was collected the following day from the vets by the crematorium, Peat Pet Crematorium. We got the phone call the following week from the vet to say they'd received Bourneville's ashes back. Uh, me and my son went to collect his ashes. Just when they thought they'd laid him to rest, the RSPCA called. A man out walking one morning had come across the bodies of four dogs dumped in a field, one of whom was Bourneville. First initial um, reaction was disbelief, saying, no, this couldn't happen, this is not, this is not right, no. Because Bourneville died in my arms, we've got his ashes here, we've got him here. And she described his markings and his microchip. She says, and he is registered to you. We went to identify the body and it was Bourneville, obviously, because he'd been in, lying in the field for um, perhaps a good week and a half. Um, two weeks, he obviously it wasn't a pretty sight, but um, he was he was a marvellous dog. His character, his personality, it was, we couldn't get one better. We couldn't get one better. And that's what hurts, because he was a member of our family, a member of our four, our four uh, dogs. These were our children as well. And um, to know that he would just dump to say he was rubbish, um, it's very heartbreaking, it's... Uh... But she wasn't alone. Found dumped in the field along with Bourneville was the body of Sam, a black Labrador whose owner, Angie, had had him put to sleep at the vet's. I assumed that he was going to go to a crematorium and that he was going to be cremated and that his ashes would be scattered. But she too had the news that the cremation she'd paid for had failed to happen and Sam's body was just dumped in a field. We just couldn't believe that we were being told this. And we just don't understand how anyone can do anything like that. I asked if I could see him, but they said, no, you cannot. We won't let you see him because of the state he's in. Because apparently he was covered in flies and maggots. And he was in a terrible state. Both Sam and Bourneville have been sent by the vet to peak pet cremations to be cremated. In reality, Emma Bent, who ran the company, had no cremation licence and her incinerator had not worked for several years. This resulted in around 3,000 pet owners being conned by her fake cremations. And it was big business. The kiln in question apparently was found in total disrepair. It was all rusted up and it hadn't been used for a long, long time. They've either been burned on bonfires or they've either been dumped at various locations. There's other evidence to say that she'd been disposing of clinical waste on bonfires. Now, this clinical waste included syringes that had still got medication in the syringes that they use to euthanise animals with. Now, how did a child got hold of that? Doesn't bear thinking about. Since then, Sam and Bourneville have been cremated under the high standards of the Association of Private Pet Cemeteries and Crematoria. These are Bourneville's genuine ashes that we witnessed at Bourneville's cremation. We're just, just so pleased, we know we've got this as the real, real Bourneville's ashes. Emma Bent had been receiving these pets from the vet and getting paid to cremate them, but instead was just dumping their bodies in the local area. She was charged with separate counts of fraud by the Crown Prosecution Service, the Environment Agency and Trading Standards, and was sentenced to eight months in jail for fraud and having no licence. We find it so hard 
that a business lady, she's a businesswoman, can be so hard-hearted and um, everything is sort of to our way of thinking, very callous. Whilst this is an extreme case, it does highlight the discrepancies in the cremation services on offer. Pet owners routinely aren't being given the cremation they believe they're paying for. For a lot of people, the perception is individual cremation equals their pet being looked after akin to a human service. Uh, and simply, that's not the case in the majority of situations using the bigger companies that will come around once a week. There are a whole range of services on offer when your pet passes away, with many claiming to cremate your pet individually. But they differ widely in their meaning of individual. Um, I'm part of an association which actually adheres to a strict code of practice that defines what individual means. And I hope our definition is in keeping with what the general public would believe individual to mean, which is one pet cremated, whether they be a hamster or a Great Dane, on their own in an enclosed chamber until the cremation is fully completed. All their ashes are then removed and given back to the owner. Some companies will do numbered tray cremations where 10, 15, possibly more pets are placed on trays and then put into a chamber at the same time. The other practice that does go on is uh, effectively a communal cremation and literally that is a scoop of ashes taken from that uh, communal cremation that then is put into a casket and given back to that owner. Uh, again, unfortunately that is under the guise of individual cremations. So it's important to know exactly which cremation service your vet uses to make an informed choice about how to say goodbye to your pet. Until something like this happens, you don't ask the questions because you don't feel you have to. And people need to go out there and find out for themselves what's what. Emergency calls come in and we go out on Real Rescues with Nick Knowles and Louise Minchin in an hour from now on BBC One. Property purchases at auction on the way next on Homes Under the Hammer. <laughs>